Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's okay and I hope everybody's looking after themselves. Tonight's video is a sensitive subject and young children should not be listening uh, to this video. This is about sexual grooming. I would urge anybody that is actually going through that to listen to this video. There will be some inappropriate imagery uh, throughout this um, video to draw attention to the fact of what a predator is actually looking for. Uh, this video is in to incite uh, of what actually happens with child grooming. The people talking throughout this video have background experience on how to deal with children grooming online and in the streets. We would urge you not to short this to anybody who is going through grooming at the moment but we hope it supports families in awareness um, of what grooming actually is and what grooming actually entails and uh, thank you for listening and hello everybody and hope everybody's okay tonight's video is about grooming and i just want to talk to you about what child grooming is child grooming isn't happening in all sexual relationships when it comes to a child grooming is basically a person taking the trust of the child or trust of the family to have a sexual relationship with a child that is m secret it's secretive nobody knows about it so the per the predator has to gain the trust of the child or the trust of the family member there's so many uh, books you can read on child grooming uh, a lot of people do it in different stages seven stages eight stages nine stages ten stages even twelve stages it's basically gaining the trust of the family or the child basically grew it to actually cause harm and have sex with that child that's what grooming is um i'm going to do it in seven steps uh, which i believe are the main steps of uh, child grooming and what to watch out for and as well everybody doesn't go through the same stages people take different stages in in grooming but it's all just in one big uh, thing um the first step of grooming is identifying the victim normally it's how a child looks or how an adult looks or if a child's vulnerable or anything like that a groomer will look for them particular traits the child could have a learning disability the child could have an illness the child could have a mental breakdown problem uh, the child could have a problem in the home um, a child could uh, dress a bit uh, inappropriately let's say um, anything along those lines uh, a groomer will actually pick up on um, if it's online it's basically photographs and the way a child speaks and a way a child behaves online and normally in a sexual type form so it might be like a child wearing a skinny top or wearing some tight clothes or something along those lines a groomer will look out for them little areas let's say it could also be that you've not got many friends and you've just moved to that particular area and you're trying to get friends they'll try all different ways like that the um second stage is gaining access and that means the groomer will try and get access into your lives uh, for building up a bond with yourself or building a bond with them um, your family uh, let's say it's a takeaway and your child goes uh, to a takeaway with her friend with herself and that type of thing or a shop or anything like that that person if they're into grooming a child children will try and gain um a bond and a friendship with your ch child but then it'll end up turning into an appropriate relationship uh, with your child um something along those lines it could be a next door neighbor uh, a next door neighbor might be able to uh, try and bond with your child in a friendly type of way and then it could lead on to grooming your child and having sex and having a sexual relationship uh, with your child there's lots of different ways and me of, of grooming uh, children but it's basically the next stage is gaining trust and um, basically 
of uh, your child and trust of you as a family. Also, don't think that when the first ghost diving in to actually try and get into grooming uh, with your children, they don't actually start talking sexually straight away. They're very clever and have clever suave and clever tactics on how they actually go around doing it. Um, a lot of the time, uh, they'll make sure you're not there uh, because you're an adult and a family member. And then they'll uh, wait till the child on their own in a room they are the adult in this situation may end up going to the toilet uh, let's say uh, and then the sexual predator will actually try and swiftly um, cleverly moving on the um, child and bring some inappropriate um, type of speaking um, like uh, Oh, uh, you're wearing a nice top today, uh, but you're looking a little bit hot. Uh, maybe you can undo your top button a little bit. So they actually like swearing in with type tactics along that type of way. Or, oh, oh, you look a bit off. I'll help you off with your uh, jumper. And then when they gain the trust that you're actually there, that is supposed to be supporting you, they'll try and go into more deep uh, um, sexual. Uh, um, manners but normally it's when the adults are not there and they can move swiftly in on the um, child stage is sexualizing the relationship a groomer will do anything to get satisfied sexual feelings and um, it could be putting a hand on the shoulder and then slowly uh, moving it down where you can't see and actually touching the child in an inappropriate manner there on the uh, boob or touching the knee and slowly moving the hands up to touch the private parts um, they'll try any slip uh, tactic uh, to try and get a sexual gratification um, from doing it. It may also be not in a sexual form of untouching. Uh, a groomer could also turn around and say to the child in a sense as well, uh, come to my house and bring a pair of your dirty knickers or dirty underpants uh, to me uh, that I can have and I can keep uh, your friends with me and uh, that type of thing. Um, sexual gratitude of a sex offender a groomer then with the knickers, he can smell them, he can do dirty things to them and that type of thing. Um, that goes on as well. As long as the child, the groomer uh, gets set set sexually uh, inappropriate with uh, the item or the person the s groomer will have se sexual gratification um, from doing that and then um, because it's getting into a sexual gratification of that sex offender uh, the sex offender then would actually turn around and say to the child oh don't tell your parents please don't tell your parents uh, oh I thought we were friends uh, I'll give you a five uh, uh, keep it secret bring me another pair of your knickers or underpants and I can give you a tenner for that if you let me uh, do this to you uh, I can give you a bit more money for that and uh, we can have some beer and we can have some chips and things like that anything they, they can hide the gratification with the will um, they're very clever and they have some very clever tactics um, to do sex offenders the next stage is actually finding out where your child is and where they are at and if they're actually doing things are inappropriate because you can tell in a child's behavior if they're being uh, sexually abused you can tell on how uh, they start behaving as well because they start coming back at uh, weird times on a night and uh, 
it's happening more than once and they're saying, oh, I'm out of friends, I'm out of friends, I'm out of friends and they're constantly turning around and saying that but they're coming back, say, 1am in the morning. As an adult, you should actually be thinking to yourself, why is it happening constantly? Are they actually at a friend's house? Um, so then you'll actually, after as, an, uh, as a grown adult, actually go and uh, see where the child is. Uh, a child will not admit to... Um, being sexually abused uh, because they'll be scared uh, to actually speak about it but if you can actually spy technically on your child you could actually work out where they are and what's happening um, you could actually find ways and means uh, what is actually happening if it's a young child you could actually do something called play therapy uh, where you can actually play with a toy and uh, try and get your child to um, talk uh, about what they're doing and that type of thing through uh, playing with a toy. But you have to know how you can bus swiftly uh, drop things in. You can't just go straight diving into uh, that authorities as well a child will be scared about you contacting certain authorities uh about being ground going in and straight doing straight running to social services or running to um the police or running to the sex clinics and things like that a child will actually get really nervous and very upset and actually shout and uh, abuse you in a type of way sense as well because they're upset that they're actually going through that particular pain of being sexually abused and you're upset that it's happening to them so you have a clash and they'll fall out with you and the first thing they'll do is go running to that um, abuser and you will just be stuck straight in the middle um that happens as well and it's a very upsetting uh, painful time uh, for a parent and for someone who's actually being abused but you need to swiftly um move in um, if you think something's inappropriate is happening but don't go straight diving into seeing uh, certain authorities try and handle it as a family first before moving in um, with the police and the social services and that type of thing but you need to work out as a family uh, in a sense what stages uh, your child's actually going through it is hard I know it's difficult and uh, I'm here to support any um, family members or people are actually being sexually abused and i hope you like tonight's video and stay safe everybody and look after yourselves